All right, good afternoon. I want to make the most of our hour together, so we're going to get started. A reminder, the webinar is being recorded. My name is Summer Rothrock. I serve as the Parent and Family Liaison. We're so excited for our second in our summer webinar series all around dining on campus. We know it's a really important topic. We're so excited to have our colleagues from Pitt Eats here, and um, we'll make the most of our hour together, get your questions answered. There are some colleagues behind the scenes if you have any questions to put in the Q&A. Uh, we'll be able to answer those and some of them will be answered live, but I'm going to turn it over to Nick, who is the Director of Marketing for Pitt Eats. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining today. Um, so you are here because you want to learn a little bit more about dining, uh, the dining experience at Pitt. Um, so I'm here to uh, kind of just give you a rundown of everything. Um, I'm joined by by Lindsay Wilson, who is our registered dietitian. So she is here available to all students who, uh, you know, whether you have a, you know, dietary restriction, food allergies, um, or even just like have general questions about, you know, wellness surrounding food. Lindsay is a resource here uh, for you. And I'm also joined uh, by Teddy, who is my marketing manager, and he is going to be behind the scenes answering uh, in the live chat as uh, questions are typed in throughout the uh, presentation. So I will go ahead and get started and we'll talk about, you know, just, you know, from a overall perspective, a lot of people ask, what is Pit Eats? So um, we are just anything dining on campus, essentially. So Pit Eats is a brand that is the partnership between us, the food provider uh, and the university. And um, we manage a variety of different dining locations, uh, around 40 different locations on campus that range from dining halls, um, you know, food court locations, um, markets and C stores on campuses or on, on campus, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, as well as um, coffee shops um, all around. So um, we are all over campus and, you know, we also interact with you know, your students every day, whether it is, you know, the uh, the frontline cooks, um, the, you know, cash, the cashiers who are interacting with students on a daily basis, um, all the way up to our leadership team who, um, you know, help put together the, the strategy and um, events and resources and all sorts of things. So overall, uh, just kind of a, um, you know, who is Pit Eats? This is us. So I will go ahead and get started talking about first year meal plans. So um, whenever it comes to first year, year meal memberships, um, there is the unlimited meal plans. And there's a couple different options um, for how to customize this uh, to get a specific experience out of it. But the unlimited meal plan is essentially, um, you guessed it, unlimited access to the eatery and perch. So the eatery and the perch are our two all you care to eat dining facilities. Um, so those with um, with the first year housing not having kitchens, you can think of these as your students' kitchen. So, um, you know, if you wanted to go in there, you know, several times throughout the day, and you want to get a snack, come back, have a full meal, go to class, come back again, have another snack. Um, that is all built in and, you know, intentional part of the unlimited dining plan is that you can just come and go from any of these, um, all you care to eat dining locations, uh, and essentially just use it as a, a kitchen that you can pop in and out of. Um, also included with the unlimited meal membership is one daily meal swap. Um, so meal swaps are almost, uh, like an extra meal that, works at any of our retail locations uh, across campus. So the meal swap is, um, you know, a meal swipe that's good for $12 at any retail location. So um, that's essentially how a meal swap works. You get one per day. They do not accumulate or stack up. If you do not use the meal swap that day, it will just reset the next day and there will still just be one available to use. Um, and then if you happen to go over the $12 limit on uh, meal swaps, 
then the difference will come out of dining dollars, which is the next portion of you know what's included in the meal membership. So uh, when you are signing up for an unlimited meal membership, there are three different options available. There's the 50, the 150, and the 300. So uh, these numbers are um, you know re relating to the amount of dining dollars that come along with that plan. So um, you know if you think that you might be more apt to just sticking with the uh, the dining halls, uh, using the unlimited and the meal swaps that come along with it, then maybe the fifty dollar 50 dining dollar plan would be right for you. But if you, you know, see yourself more as the type of person who is going to be popping in and out of the markets to grab um, some snacks and drinks, um, you know, as part of your, you know, daily, weekly routine, whichever, uh, going to coffee shops, um, or just adding a little bit more on top of your experience by, um, you know, utilizing the, uh, the markets, the coffee shop, et cetera, maybe a higher dining dollar plan would be good for you. And then um, flex swaps, which are the last uh, portion of the meal membership. Um, so these are essentially, you can think of these like guest swaps. So you can bring some friends, some family, um, or you can use them on yourself. There is no um, you know rule or anything that says you can't do that. But um, just think of them as 10 additional meals that are you know kind of put there for, for the intent of bringing someone along. Um, for upper class meal memberships. So these will, you know, become available after the first year, um, you know, meal plans. And, you know, the availability of certain meal plans does depend on, you know, where you're living in uh, in student housing. So, uh, but just to give a an overview of what some of these upper class meal memberships look like, um, we have what we call lifestyle memberships. So, um, the foodie, eat on the run, panther on the go. Um, so these are, you know, a mix of, you know, includes one to two meal swaps per day. Um, it's not unlimited like um, like the first year plans. So um, these are more kind of tailored to, you know, your lifestyle. If you uh, feel like it might be, it might make more sense to just have, you know, one meal a day on campus and then you can use your your dining dollars to um you know do the do the rest of your your purchasing or if you you know wanted to cook at home um you know after you're not living in the first year housing anymore um that's why we have all these here just so there's a custom option that's available for anyone um so that we also have dining dollar memberships so these are strictly dining dollars so and I will get more into the perks of using dining dollars in a later slide. So, um, so moving on, I, I did cover this a little bit earlier, but just wanted to, uh, you know, I think some of the biggest questions that we get from students and parents once the uh, once once move in happens is, you know, kind of a breakdown of all of the different components of the uh, of the meal membership. So meal swap. Uh, is one of the the biggest and and most popular components of the meal uh, of the meal membership that you'll hear about. So, like I said, it's a daily meal to use at Pitt Eats dining locations, um, and so these are accepted anywhere that Pitt Eats operates. So there are a couple on campus that uh, do not accept meal swaps. So that would be. Uh, you know, Saxby's Panera Bread and Cathedral Sushi. Um, but other than that, there are uh, about 40 other locations that do accept meal swap on campus. Um, you can order anything on the menu up to $12. And like I said, if you do go over that $12 allotment, then the difference just comes out of dining dollars, get one to use per day, and they do not accumulate. Um, so next will be combo meals. So these kind of tie into meal swap. Uh, but these are essentially an added value um, item that are part of a meal membership. So when you go to some of these locations, say it's a uh, true burger, which is our, um, you know, burger restaurant in the uh, William Pitt Union. Um, so you can order anything that you want off the menu as part of your meal swap, but to ensure that you can get a full meal, which is entree, side and drink, um, we have these combo meals available which can only be purchased with a meal swap. They cannot be purchased with 
cash, um, dining dollars, um, or any anything um, that isn't part of the meal membership. So this is a perk that is specifically reserved for uh, those with meal memberships. Dining dollars. So um, dining dollars are the currency for your meal membership. Um, and a lot of uh, questions that we get surrounding dining dollars are, you know, if one dollar and one dining dollar spend the same, why should I use dining dollars? Why shouldn't I just use my credit card or or my debit card? Or why shouldn't I just use cash? Um, so the uh, the reason for that is any of our non-national brands, which encompasses about 75% of the locations that are here uh, on, you know, in the Pit Eats sort of portfolio, 75% um, of those are non-national brands. Um, and you will get a 10% discount applied when you use dining dollars at non-national brands. Um, and in addition to that, there's no added sales tax. So if you take those two factors and you uh, kind of compound those over the year and you know see how if you were to spend cash versus if you were how do you to spend dining dollars uh, there are significant savings and incentives to using dining dollars versus just using cash uh, it's also nice just because with dining dollars you can have a you know account that you allocate your funds to for dining and that way you know as you're you know going to college, becoming an adult, figuring out how to budget your money. Here is my money for food. And then, you know, you can have your your personal funds for for everything else. But um, yeah, so essentially that is dining dollars in a nutshell. Um, and another thing is 25% of the dining dollars are allotted to off-campus partners. So these are some mom and pop shops that are around Oakland. So I would say, yeah, non-national restaurants, uh, locally owned. This is kind of just to get, um, you know, students acclimated and introduced to the the new neighborhood that they're going to be living in, uh, explore and spend their money with uh, some local vendors. So um, real, real cool perk with dining dollars. Next up is uh, Transact Mobile. So um, this is very important app to have. Uh, just to get the most value out of your meal membership. So with uh, Transact Mobile, you can order online. Um, it's, you know, and we all order things online nowadays. It's 2024, but um, this um, app has some great features as far as, you know, if you have a, a time crunch between class, you need to, um, you know, hurry up and get your lunch. You can, you know, not to incentivize anyone using their phones in class, but if you wanted to, you could uh, place your order early, uh, pick up your food, um, and because it will give you a you know window of time uh, that the order will be complete. Um, and then there's also rewards that you can redeem. So we offer lots of different uh, you know participation drivers, inbox messages, uh, punch codes, Taco Tuesday, you name it, all sorts of different. Um, rewards programs that are you know specific to mobile ordering um and then you know new in the past year is you know delivery to litchfield towers so we have a you know a new set of food lockers that exists in litchfield towers which you can order food from delivery to and uh, we also have our amazon just walk out market which exists in the litchfield towers and that store is accessed through mobile ordering. So lots of different reasons to download this app. Um, it's definitely a super convenient way to kind of access all of the different options that are available on campus. So definitely recommend getting this app. Uh, so there is a um, QR code to scan right there. But if not, we'll have all sorts of uh, tabling information uh, during Welcome Week for how to get started with Transact Mobile. And looking at Dine on Campus, so Dine on Campus is the Pitt Eats Dining website. Um, so this is a great resource for staying in the loop about, uh, you know, seeing where the locations are. We have a uh, interactive campus map that that shows you where everything is at. Um, we have our hours of operation always accurately listed on this website. Uh, we have 
daily menus. So if you go to the eatery or the perch and you wanted to uh, you know, check the menu before you go, you can go on there, check the menus, see if it's uh, you know, what they're serving that day. And if if there's something that you really like that you want to go and you know you're trying to make a decision on where to go, that's a really good uh, you know, resource to use. And uh, you know, also events, pop-ups, uh, things like that will be available on this website. And of course, our social media accounts. So uh, we post a lot about different, you know, events, limited time offers, promos, deals, et cetera. Um, so if you're looking to be more, you know, informed, in touch with, uh, you know, what's going on in dining, what sort of uh, events are happening, uh, what sort of promos are happening, um, or if you want to also just be, you know, take part in some giveaways, because we do lots of those, uh, follow us at Pit Eats. Uh, pit.eats on Instagram, which is where we're most active, but we also have TikTok and Facebook. Uh, but yeah, so events, uh, we do lots of different events in the dining halls throughout the year. So we have large scale events, which are like our joyful event series, our Thanksgiving dinner, our late night breakfast. Uh, we do cultural celebrations like uh, Diwali. We do Lunar New Year, Black History Month, um, all sorts of cultural themed events. And, um, you know, looking at this year, we'll be doing, um, you know, some new events that kind of tie into the, uh, the, the finished construction of the eatery for this fall. So looking forward to unveiling all of those. Uh, here is just a snapshot at the locations that are available. So lots of different uh, locations on this page. Um, so I'll leave that here. If you want to take a screenshot of it, or if you want to look at our website, all of these locations are listed on there, uh, along with their hours of operation. Um, but yeah, so um, at this time, I am going to pass it over real quick to Lindsay, um, so she can you know talk a little bit more about nutrition and wellness. Thank you, Nick. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Lindsay Wilson. and I'm the registered dietitian with Pitt Eats. So first and foremost, I just wanted to make you all aware of the fact that I am available for your students to meet with for free um, with support on nutrition and wellness in numerous different areas. This can range from if they have a medical-based dietary restriction, whether that be a food allergy or celiac disease, diabetes, um, et cetera. It can also be if they're simply following a plant-based diet, whether that be vegan, vegetarian, or maybe there is a faith-based diet that they're following, such as kosher or halal. Um, I'm also the point of contact for students for dining for any sort of accommodations that they may wish to make um, or explore. And it could also be something as simple as them simply looking to eat healthier on campus. So let's kind of break that down a little bit further with regards to some of the resources and options that are available in each one of these areas. So when students are looking at navigating any sort of medical-based dietary restriction, uh, we do have numerous resources in place that can help support them so that they can manage that on their own. So this can look at, um, you know, some of the things that Nick has talked about already from our online menus. Um, which is a great resource for students to access, and they can access the online menus via our website or our mobile app as well. Um, and so with those online menus, students will find our dietary icons there. So these icons range from vegan and vegetarian to avoiding gluten, um, as well as options that are climate friendly and also high protein. So with those icons, you can find them on the online menus, as well as on the digital menu boards that are above each one of our serving lines within the actual dining halls. Um, also on the online menu, students can find a filter on there that will help them find appropriate options. So that filter will help um, filter out things, for example, if they're just looking for vegan options. They can select that filter to only have them show vegan, and then they can see what's available and on the menu at different dining locations that meet those specific needs. So that filter and those icons are a great resource to utilize within the online menus. Um, additionally, within the specific locations, if students do have food allergies or celiac disease, they can find those allergen-friendly options um, at our Flourish station. 
So with our Flourish station, it is specifically located within the eatery within Litchfield Towers, and that is a dedicated top nine and gluten-free friendly station. So within that station, the menus are planned to be void of those allergens, um, but we also specifically have all of the product um, that is meant for that station stored there, prepped there, and served there by trained staff. Um, so that is a great resource for students who have any sort of food allergies that fall within the top nine, um, as well as gluten-free friendly options to really delve into that option as a fantastic resource. Um, however, if they do have any questions or concerns about any menu options, ingredients, allergens within food, um, we have our ingredient expert program there to help support them. So these ingredient experts are staff members who are at the supervisory level and above. So supervisors, managers, directors, as well as our chefs within the locations um, who are more or who are trained more in depth on allergens, celiac disease, how to avoid cross contact, how to read food labels. Um, as well as other dietary restrictions as well, including different religious diets and plant-based options. So with these staff members, they will be wearing hats um, that will specifically say ingredient expert on them. And so those are the staff members that we really want students to reach out to um, if they have questions or need support, because those are the staff members that are going to be the best equipped to help answer their questions and get students the support that they need whenever they're within our operations. Um, within the operations themselves, like I said, aside from the Flourish Station, which is allergen friendly, we do have many vegan and vegetarian options within our facilities. So they're most easily found via those icons that I mentioned um, when looking at the menu boards and at the online menus. Um, but we will also have those within the locations on what we call little product identifiers um, on the serving line. So those are just going to be little digital tags that will have the name of the item being served and that icon next to it. So that's a great resource for students. But basically within either one of our all you care to eat dining facilities, the eatery and the perch, there will be vegan and vegetarian options at just about every single station. Um, we really they made a concentrated effort this year to integrate those to, into each and every station within the dining halls. Um, and so students will be able to find things like vegan burgers at our grill stations, or they can find tofu at the salad bar. There will be um, vegan options at the pasta station and so on and so forth. So every station will have those built within there. Um, and students can simply find those by looking at the online menus or looking for those icons. Um, with halal and kosher options, we do make those readily available to students as well in different ways. So when looking at kosher options on campus, we specifically have a dining location called the Delicatessen, and that is located outside of the eatery within Litchfield Towers. And so with this specific location, we do have a partnership with Elegant Edge Catering, um, which is kosher as well as halal certified. And so with this location, um, we do have somebody specifically in charge of overseeing that that is certified um, in kosher practices. And so students can find everything from daily offerings like lox bagels to matzo ball soup to different sandwiches and so on and so forth. However, we do have daily rotating hot specials that can be found at that location as well, um, as well as cold grab and go offerings that are available too. And with those cold grab and go offerings, we not only make those available there, but we also make them for purchase within all of our convenience stores across campus as well, located within um, Sutherland Hall, as well as Litchfield Towers, and then at Forbes Street Market as well. So students can find array, an array of offerings um, via that location, as well as the different options that we make available that are packaged and sent out to some of our retail locations across campus. With regards to halal offerings, as I mentioned, the delicatessen is halal certified, so all the options there do work for that specific dietary lifestyle as well. But we do have halal certified proteins available within the dining halls across campus too. Um, so with halal options, you can find those um, specifically all of the options at um, Kukumi as well as table 33 with our beef and chicken options at those two locations. And then the halal um, halal proteins that we have can also be found within our um, chicken and beef offerings throughout other stations within the dining halls as well. Um, within our retail locations, our halal chicken and beef um, within the Cathedral Cafe at Palm and Honey are halal certified, um, as well as at True Burger and PA Taco within um, 
the William Pitt Union. So those are specifically the beef and chicken options. Um, we do have specific guides available for students for halal as well as kosher offerings and vegan and vegetarian offerings. Um, so I do highly suggest that if your student follows any of these specific dietary styles to have them reach out to me directly so that they can get a more thorough rundown um, of specifically where they can find these options on campus. Um, however, if your student, regardless of whatever diet that they're following, feels like they need some sort of accommodation, whether that be due to a food allergy, celiac disease, a faith-based diet, et cetera, um, please have them reach out. We can talk through what options are available to them um, and if an accommodation would be appropriate for them, and I can walk them through that process. Um, if any sort of meal plan modification or exemption does come through my office, so that if that is something that your student um, feels like they need, please have them reach out directly. Um, aside from all of the different options and resources that are available, we do have additional things just to help keep students safe throughout the year. Um, so we offer a get well meal program. So this would be if your student finds themselves ill for any reason, um, or if maybe they, for example, break their leg, um, unfortunately, but that has happened to at least one student this past year. So um, if they find any trouble with mobility or just illness in general, with getting to the dining halls throughout the year for a limited time, they can use our Get Well Meal Order form, which is on our website. Um, they can fill that out. And then they could pick up um, one time per day up to three meals. Um, and ideally, obviously, we if they're ill, we would want them to send somebody else in their place to pick that up. So they can designate a friend, a roommate, an RA, et cetera, um, to go down into the dining hall, pick up their meals for them, and take that back up to the room so that they can rest there um, and still be nourished at the same time. If you have any issues whatsoever finding the form, please reach out to me directly. I'm happy to help coordinate that. But keep that in mind especially during cold and flu season um, when your student may need a little bit of extra support. Um, additionally, if you ever find your student having any questions or concerns about food safety or they feel like maybe they got sick from something that they ate on campus, um, we do also process those as well. Any sort of questions and complaints um, regarding food safety, we take to the utmost um, in sincerity and importance. It is very, very important for us to hear about these things whenever your student feels like they may have any issues. Um, and we investigate those um, very in-depth to see if there is anything specifically on our end that may have occurred, um, or at the very least, if it wasn't something on our end, we can better connect your student with the appropriate campus resources to help manage any sort of illness that they do have while they are on campus. Um, so I know that was a lot of information. My contact information there is at the end of that slide. And um, with my email address being dietitian at pit.edu, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to schedule individual consultations either with you or with your student to talk through any potential options or resources that they may need to explore while they're on campus. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. So I was actually just getting ready. I was typing up some responses in the uh, in the questions right now. But since I was in the middle of that, I will just answer this live. So I have one from Christine that says, do you have data comparing how much students use their meal plan versus how much they pay for it? Do students actually fully use the dining benefits they or their parents paid for. So um, having said that, we monitor usage and participation throughout the semester, and we will typically offer promos that will advertise on social media, around the dining halls, and you know in high traffic areas, uh, just to make sure that students are getting the best value out of the meal membership. Typically, what we observe, this is mostly relevant to dining dollars, um, you know, we feel that the unlimited and the meal swaps are very well utilized. Um, the meal swaps are are typically the most popular and, you know, valuable part of the, well, unlimited is the most value uh, associated with the meal plan, but there's a lot of value also associated with the meal swap. Students know this as they, as they begin to use their meal plan. Those, those two parts are utilized very well. The one thing that we do typically see sometimes is dining dollars. Um, a lot of times we'll get to the end of the, the semester, end of the year. We'll see that, you know, student may not have utilized their dining dollars. So uh, we'll run promos that help them get the most value out of it. Now, something important to note is that dining dollars do roll over from the spring or from the fall to the spring. But at the end of the academic year, those dining dollars will expire. So I would say, um, you know, 
talk to your students, see where they're at with uh, the amount of dining dollars they spent in the fall, and then see if it makes sense to adjust the amount that they're um, you know, getting in the spring. So, um, but like I said, we do run promos to help them utilize that if there is a large amount of din dining dollars left over. So an example of something that we do is in the markets, we'll do like bulk order items. So, um, you know, it's like going into Costco or something, if they have a favorite drink or something that you want to buy and, and take home, stock up, um, like a big box of Celsius energy drinks or something. We make that really easy for them to uh, to purchase. That way, they're not leaving any dining dollars on the table. Um, but yeah, so that's that is just one example. Um, so yeah, and I'll move on to the next question: Is there a place to see how much was spent during the semester to help decide if there should be a change for the following semester? So um, this information is accessible to. Um, your student through their uh, mobile wallet that they have, they'll be able to see all of the uh, the funds that they have that they spent. Um, we do not share this information with parents, so you will need to uh, have that conversation uh, with your student just to make sure um, that that you both are on the same page. But since since you know they are adults now, we do you know share that information with them and them alone, and it's. Um, you know, a conversation between um, the parent and the student about, you know, accessing that information. Um, what are the different stations available in the dining hall? Um, so we, I can give a, an overview of some of these, but I do want to say that we will be offering another session uh, similar to this uh, later in the month. It's on the, the 17th. It's the, the Pitt Eats Town Hall. And we will be going into um, specific details about specifically the updated eatery. So um, the eatery has 10 uh, stations that are associated with it. I know that Lindsay covered a couple of them. But um, so we have, you know, the Delicatessen, which is our kosher station, Flourish, which is our allergen friendly station. We'll have a station called Farm Stand, which is um, all hyper local farm to table uh, and sustainable meals that are more plant forward and offer, um, you know, that kind of sort of healthy balanced meals. We have Cucina, which is our Italian concept that offers uh, homemade pasta and pizza. Table 33, which is our Latin American station. Um, we have Kukumi and Saffron, which are an Asian and Middle Eastern concept. Um, trying to think, doing this just off the top of my head. We have Briny Pickle, which is our um, our corner deli. You can get um, some custom made to order sandwiches, soups, pasta salads, potato salads, things like that. Um, food truck, which is our comfort food station, um, which you know you'll be able to order. You know burgers and fries, chicken tenders, but also um, a really diverse rotation of, of different like food truck style foods. Um, and then Unwind, which is going to be our coffee and gelato station. Are the dining locations open on school breaks such as Thanksgiving? So we follow the university um, closure dates. So for breaks, whenever a student, anytime students are on campus, the, uh, the dining locations will be op open. If, uh, if for some reason, like it's, it's fall break, there are no students on campus, the locations will not be open. Um, we are very diligent about communicating these hours. So they'll be posted on our website. They'll be posted, uh, in the dining locations as well as our social media. So, it will never be a surprise if something is not open. Is the mobile wallet the same as the Transact app? It is powered by Transact, um, but it is a different app. I've seen food trucks parked around campus. Do they take dining dollars? If so, are they part of the 25%? Um, so we have our 
community markets, which happen on Thursdays. Um, food trucks are are um, typically parked out there. Those you can use dining dollars at, and it actually doesn't even have to be part of the 25%. You can use your regular dining dollars at those um, if it is the community market on Thursdays. However, um, other food trucks are not part of the uh, the 25%. Um, and I believe in the answered questions, Teddy posted the link to um, all of the accepting locations that are available for the 25%. Okay, well, that wraps up all of the questions. Um, I will, I'll give it a minute in case another one pops in, but wanted to take a second to thank everybody for joining today and, uh, you know, listening to our presentation about dining. Um, if you have any additional questions, you can reach out to us at pitteats at pit.edu, and we'll be happy to get back to you with a response to those. I saw one more pop in that says, can students use Panther funds for food on campus? Yes, uh, Panther funds can be used uh, for food. Um, typically, we see Panther funds used more for things like laundry um, or at the bookstore, but you know, Panther funds are available uh, for food if, if your student wants to use Panther funds. Do you mind quickly reiterating the 75%, 25%? Sure. So whenever you purchase the meal plan, 75% of the dining dollars are allocated to um, you know, on-campus options. That 25% is to be used um, off-campus at different vendors that are available on the website that um, Teddy posted. But if... Um, if you go to our, our website that we presented or that we mentioned on here, dineoncampus.com backslash pit, um, those uh, locations are all listed there. Uh, and the 25% doesn't have to be used there. Um, they can be used on campus. It's just uh, allocated for that. Is it clear on the mobile wallet app how much was spent is available for each fund, dining dollars, Panther funds? Uh, yes. So there, there will be a specific breakdown for each uh, different currency that's available. Can you add money to dining dollars during the semester? Yes, you can. Um, so there is a portal on the My Pit um, portion of the Pit website that um, you can click on, goes to the... Uh, um, the dining dollars and that is an easy way to add funds throughout the semester so um you can do that without having access to the account you will just need the uh the name and the id number associated with the pit id and you'll be able to make deposits to the dining dollar accounts panther funds accounts whenever you uh whenever you would like to All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining. Uh, appreciate all of the questions and appreciate your time today. So, um, yeah, it's twelve forty. We we went through the presentation, um, and you know, I'll give you 20, 20 minutes of your uh, of your day back. But um, like I said, if there's any more questions that you have, feel free to reach out to us at pit eats at pit.edu. We'll be happy to answer any questions individually. So, thank you very much, and have a great day. Thank you, Nick and Pete Pitt Eats team. And the recording will be on the Student Affairs YouTube channel in just a few days. Thank you.